question, then we'll go to Senator Just Green. I'm very mindful that we have the inquiry um, under the References Committee into DSP, but I'm just trying to understand a little bit more because I'm not really that overly familiar with all the intricacies of it. Um, but listening to Senator Seawert, a number of the same terms are floating around with DSP as do around the NDIS and talking about impairment tables, looking at independent assessments and the problems that they're being created with um, the NDIS at the moment and then hearing about functional capacity. I mean, are there conversations going on cross agencies so that people aren't having to go through different types of assessments, prove their functionality or lack of um, for different departments, that there's some sort of linkage? Because it would both seem to be um, difficult and challenging for the, the participant and applicant for DSP, but also a complete duplication of bureaucratic um, capabilities. So, you know, to, to actually bring those more synergistically together. So, Senator, I think that's something we could look at. Um, the functional assessment for DSP is generally about people's capacity to work. Mm. Uh, I think the NDIS is more about the broader, the entire living of some an individual's living circumstances as well. Yeah. But I think. I mean, um, the NDIS is obviously going to be yeah. more extensive. Yeah. But certainly, part of a lot of people's NDIS's uh, goals. Is which is what we've been talking about a lot of, um, certainly in the background, is the goals of participants of the NDIS, and a lot of those people have goals to get back into employment. So to either just be able to take that section out rather than making them go through a completely different assessment again. Senator, I think that's something that we can consider, and, and Minister Reynolds is doing, um, as you know, broad consultation yeah. on these matters at the moment. So I think that's something that we can work with the National Disability Insurance Agency on. The other thing that's worth pointing out to Senator Hughes is the fact that, um, that whilst NDIS is a, is a standalone um, authority, um, Secretary Campbell, as the Secretary for DSS, does have oversight mm. um, of, uh, of both of the issues that you're referring to. And I, and I think you, know, you, you make a very valid point around making sure that there is a, a streamlined system that doesn't you know, end up with a duplication mm. of provision of information in relation to the broader functionality to work as opposed to the yeah. other functionality components. So I, I think I think you raise a very good point and, and I'm sure the Secretary um, will be taking it up and I'm, I'm more than happy to take it up with um, Senator Reynolds because I, yeah. I think you know, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, and so the yeah. other thing, and again this is probably a little bit sort of technical and I'm sure Senator Seawick could probably have updated me on this anyway, but when it comes to partial capacity to work, um, one of the things that I heard a while ago, so I think the hours might have changed now, but there was, and, and I will talk to the autism cohort, people that were getting jobs for the first time, particularly in the data and cyber space, but a lot of these people are on a DSP, have been on the DSP for you know a considerable amount of time, have applied for 700 jobs, and that's not an overstatement of the number of jobs they've applied for over their lifetime finally get to work with an organisation like Exceptional or with you, with me, or some of these other ones that are more focused on different kinds of a recruitment approaches into that cyber and data space. They get a job for the first time, a lot of time ever, but they're absolutely petrified of taking on the hours that then sees their DSP removed, because having gone through the process of applying for so many jobs, if they lose their job, they don't have that access straight back onto the DSP. And I just wondered if you could sort of help me understand, and certainly the people that have asked me, you know, what are the hours people can work before they lose access to the DSP per week? And do we have any capacity with this particular co cohort um, that if, you know, they have a lifelong disability, it's not going anywhere. They've had challenges to get into the workforce, but are there now that we can encourage them to work more, but if, for example, the tech company they're working for folds, they have access to go back to the DSP without having to jump through all the hoops again? So, Senator, um, it's not an hours, it's a dollars, mm -hmm. how much people earn, and I'm sure that we've probably yeah. got an officer at the table. Okay. And then we also, there are different provisions about DSP, how, how long yeah, people can go to what's called nil rate, yeah. and stay eligible to come back to DSP, yeah. should their job disappear or the, the company yeah. fold, and Mr Sloan yep. might be able to give yep. you that so, detail. As the Secretary said, um, a, single a single person on DSP, yes, I'm in the right space, can earn 
$2,083.40 before losing the... So losing how, over what period of time? A fortnight. A fortnight, sorry, yep. I missed And a uh, member of a couple, um, between them, they can get 3188 40, and as yep. the secretary said, if you come off completely, mm. you are suspended for two years. Two so years. you can come back on yeah. up to two years. So you don't have to. Has that changed from hours to dollars? Because the, the figure they came to me that I heard, and this was oh, a couple yes. years ago, was 15 hours a week or something. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It gets confusing yeah. because. What a surprise! <laughs> <laughs> So, um, um, so, so that's okay. what when you're on payment, mm. the um, and Mr. Sloan will yep. give a better definition of this. Go for it, Mr. Sloan. Yeah. So yeah. you can you can sorry uh, you are correct, Senator. The, that they are the income limits, and you have an hour limit of thirty hours a week. Thirty hours a week. Okay, so it doubled. I knew there was. Yeah, there was I, two, I had heard there was some change, but I wasn't hundred yeah. percent sure so, where it was. Sorry. Then there's the thing about. Um, Partial capacity to work less than 15 or less that's than eight. It, that's, the, that's part of the qualifying period is the 15 hours. So that's part of the test when you go through, as I can okay. see, see what nodding her head over there. Yeah. Because um, yeah. sometimes they're very specific jobs. And, you know, you might, a partial capacity to work might be a, a capacity to work, but in this sort of very small area um, versus, yeah. you know, I can go get a job in a cafe or a restaurant, you know. The, the policy is established for just as you've described, Senator, to encourage people, to give them the confidence to go into that work and have that safety net yeah. so that they feel confident to engage in that manner. All right, lovely. Thank you so much. I just really just wanted to clarify some of that.